to continue the thought uh, from the last uh, recording where I talked about how liberal or conservative does a person need to be in order to be in the faith. I want to continue that thought as applies to microchurch. Uh, a year ago I had a conversation with someone who was considering our way of doing church, the simple way of doing church, simpler way of doing church, the X242 model, if you call it that, which is not our model. It's a model that everyone uses worldwide. Uh, it just has our culture to it and our little flavor to it. But she was asking me, uh, she said she and her husband have a compassion for LGBTQ plus all that. They have a compassion for that community and feel like the church has uh, been violent toward them. How she might have not said violent, but that sort of a thing. And they have a passion, by the way, it's morning and I'm driving into the sun. I'm on my way to a church in Dover, Ohio, Life Bridge. Uh, if you get a chance to visit there, Eric Miller, the pastor is a good guy, his wife, Carmen, uh, and their kids and all that good people. Um, she asked me, she said, so understanding that her sense of call is to show compassion to people who consider themselves LGBTQ. For some reason, I don't feel like I'm saying those letters right. I never have a problem saying those letters. For some reason, it's not coming out right. If it's something else, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And she has a compassion for it, and, uh, but not to correct their way, but to accept them and show them that they are loved and accepted by uh, even Jesus followers. Uh, oh man, another conversation on that. I guess I've talked to it before on this channel. She asked me, can a homosexual come to one of your micro churches? And my answer was, of course, anyone can come to our micro churches. Of course they can. And I said, but if by that you mean, can they come and never be made to feel uncomfortable about their sexual orientation or however you want to frame that. I said, no, you, you can't expect to come and never be uncomfortable because when we read the scriptures, we're not going to skirt around the ones that call homosexuality a sin. Uh, and understanding that people have different beliefs about whether it calls homosexuality a sin. I personally believe that it does, but it can be uh, talked about through a compassionate conversation. That's, that's my belief and practice. But uh, I said, no, we will never skirt around a scripture so that we don't make someone uncomfortable in the same way that if people are cohabiting, uh, we're not going to skirt around sexual immorality scriptures either. We won't skirt around the sin passages. Greed, we won't skirt around the sin passages in order to make guilty people feel unguilty to make guilty people feel innocent uh, by virtue of just withholding uh, truth from them. Now, everything can be redeemed. And so, yes, as we study the apostles' teachings, Acts 2, verse 42, as we devote ourselves to the apostles' teachings, reading the scriptures and everything, we will come to that redemption message. All things can be redeemed. All things can be delivered. We can be delivered from all manner of sins and redeemed from them and restored to full fellowship with the Lord and his church, his family, our brothers and sisters. And so, so that was my answer. Yes, everyone's allowed to come, but we're not going to go out of our way to try to make people feel comfortable uh, to make sure no one feels uneasy. We'll read everything for what it is. Let the scriptures say everything they say and don't make the scriptures say anything they don't say. Uh, that will be our practice and everyone is allowed to come. I had another conversation uh, with a small group of people that this lady is a part of, has been a part of for the better part of 30 years. Most of them have been together a really long time. And in the, within this group, there is liberal leanings and there's strong conservative leanings, strong liberal, strong conservative. And yet they're in fellowship together and it causes tension, but I was able to go and watch them talk through things. And even on my own, I introduced some of the tension on purpose just to watch how they, 
not not just as sort of like a field trip to or like entertainment to watch how they do it, but like I wanted to see how do they have the conversations where there's disagreement. And I watched them give each other a hard time in in Christian love, brother and sister, sibling uh, rivalry kind of stuff, teasing sort of stuff. But uh, they didn't shy away. They just had the conversations. And as I leaned in and demonstrated what it is to to actually confront uh, what I think is false teaching uh, with true teaching, they allowed it. And even this lady who believes differently than I do about it, she said, well, see, you can say those things because you're kind. And I said, Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> we can all be kind. We should be kind. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so we should be kind. We should always be ready to give a reason for the hope that we have. We should gently instruct those who oppose us. All those things, that should always be our way. We should never take up the, the culture or the influence or the berating that we see in the world when they disagree about things where they think the strongest way to win an argument is to cut down the other person through uh, ad hominem arguments and stuff. Like, like, come on, church, let's stop doing that. Let's have kind, considerate, gentle discussions where we gently instruct those who oppose us. Now, I know that by saying that, I have just given, anyone who's following my lead on this, I've just given permission or invited liberals to speak in to what they believe is false teaching. I personally believe, caveat coming, but I personally believe that we are better when they bring their objections, bring their thoughts, their discussions to the table gently, kindly, considerately. Now, to say that, to say that we're better to have the discussion is not to say that I think there's no such thing as truth and lies, truth and deception, truth and untruth. I believe there is. And I believe that we should all be leaning toward truth. And as I said last week, I believe the conservative position would say we don't have to progress our understanding in order to have truth we need to protect our understanding so that we don't stray from the truth. I believe we, as a culture, and even as a Christian culture, we have taken a new position, historically new position, where we sit in judgment on the scriptures rather than allowing them, inviting them to sit in judgment on us. And so anything that we agree with, we submit to. Yeah, we're the, we're the authority. Anything that we don't agree with, we reject. I believe the teachings of Jesus as handed down to us through the apostles, it's the only record we have, I believe that we are to submit to them. So in 2 Timothy 6, Paul says to Timothy, if anyone teaches otherwise than what we're teaching and does not agree to the sound instruction of Jesus, not does not agree with, but does not agree to, this is NIV, but I think it makes it clear, does not agree to is conceited and doesn't understand. We need to stop sitting in judgment on the scriptures and let the scriptures sit in judgment on us. We need to stop asking whether we agree with the scriptures, but we need to start agreeing to the sound instruction of Jesus. Meaning, not the things that we believe, the doctrinal nuances, but the things that we do. Do we love God with all we are and love our neighbor with all we have? Now here's my conviction. When I say I really do believe that people in the faith, look at last week for my clarification, people in the faith who lean left, who lean lean right, who lean progressive, who lean conservative, people in the faith should gather together and read the scriptures. I believe in the name of Jesus and in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, looking to agree to the sound instructions of Jesus and not with, I believe that they will do good to gather around the table and read those scriptures out loud and then talk about it, ask the questions. What tension does this create? Does this this say anything that you don't agree with? 
in order to agree to this, do you need to change your view on anything, your practice on anything? I believe that if we would gather around the scriptures and read them for a prolonged period of time, not, not like for hours at one time, but for, for an hour each week for a prolonged period of time, meeting regularly, let the Holy Spirit lead, I believe that he will lead us through the scriptures into right understanding and right practice so that we live according to the teachings of Jesus. This is my conviction, and, uh, and I believe we are better for the conversation when we're looking to scripture. My encouragement for today. Amen.